And Hatch says 30,000 more troops, still not enough. Senator, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as a member of the Intelligence Committee, do you think that uh, Hamid Karzai can step up to the plate, uh, given all the pressure on him, the personal phone call the night before last from the president, and what Secretary Clinton said has been conveyed to both him and to the Pakistanis about what's going to come next? Well, I know Hamid Karzai, and I have to say that it's a very difficult country to run because it's made up of great tribal elements. But yeah, he's he's our horse, and we're going to have to we're going to have to ride uh, his his administration. It's just the way it is. I have to say, though, that I'm very concerned. I I thought the president did a good job last night. I thought his speech was good. We have a pie here about three quarters baked. The other quarter is the real issue, and that is uh, the president has agreed to put 30,000 people in there. I think that's been very good. He's followed the advice of his uh, generals. I commend the president for that. The real problem here is that uh, what do we do in just 18 months? It took us eight years to develop 80,000 Afghan troops. The estimate is it will take at least four times that number to be able to bring uh, st stabilization to Afghanistan. Can we do that within the next 18 months? Well, what the Robert idea Gates, here, what, excuse me, Senator, what, what uh, the defense secretary said in his testimony today was he reminded people that the surge in Iraq was only 14 months and that by the end of that, the Iraqis wanted us out. They wanted to stand up and take over. You don't think the Afghans can, can match that? I have a great respect for uh, for uh, Robert Gates, no question about it. But let's be, let's understand it. Afghanistan is not Iraq. Iraq was largely an urban area. You could go in there. You could do the counterinsurgency uh, moves that were done much easier. Afghanistan is a rural. Uh, all of them are rural villages, and we can do the same thing. But it's really going to take some time. And like I say, it took eight years to get 80,000 troops prepared, and and you're going to need at least four times that many to really be able to bring in the full counterinsurgency benefits uh, that occurred there. So that's the quarter of the pie that has to be a matter of great concern to us. So, and the president did leave a little leeway there uh, in 18 months. I don't think he got himself bound down to where he can't. He has to pull our trips out. If if we're on the verge of uh, victory over there and on the verge of getting things stabilized. I, uh, I, I happen to, uh, I'm very concerned about what Richard Haas said because I don't quite agree with him. I think that if the Taliban comes in and they really establish themselves and take over Afghanistan after we leave, uh, look, they're, they're, they've got a jihadist move, and I think they could very easily try to take over Pakistan to get to those uh, nuclear weapons. And frankly, once that happens, this whole world's going to change dramatically. And I hope it th never happens. And that's why it's so important for us to be there, do a good job, and for the American people to support our troops while they're there. And there will be more testimony on all of this tomorrow, so that will be our next 24. Thank you very much, Senator Hatch, for helping us segue into that. And the president will also, of course, be trying to talk about the economy tomorrow with that job summit at the White House. We're uh, going back to basics there. And a special programming note.